What's up guys, Brendan Hancock here with another episode of Groove Subaru Today, and today we're gonna to take a look and compare the two most popular vehicles that we have, the Subaru Outback and the Subaru Forester. So over here, I have the 2018 Subaru Outback, and this is gonna be the 3.6R Touring option, so the highest trim level you can get. And this one right here, this is gonna be the 2018 Subaru Forester. This is gonna be the XT Touring option, also the highest trim level that you can get. Now, when comparing these vehicles on paper, they're almost exactly the same. Uh, very, very similar in price. In terms of cargo capacity, they're both within one cubic feet of one another, and they get very similar fuel economy. They both have 8.7 inches of ground clearance and have Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive. So typically, when someone is comparing, is, is taking a look at the Subaru Outback, they're also considering the Subaru Forester as an option. So the things we're gonna discuss today in comparing these two vehicles is obviously the aesthetics and overall numbers of the vehicle, and we're gonna take a look at the driving dynamics and overall feel of it, and also the features and amenities you get on the inside with both of these vehicles. Now, if we're taking, let's take a look at the Outback first. The Outback, this is the touring model, so we do have a little bit of extra chrome here on this trim level, but overall kind of gives you more of that wagon-like feel. Um, I like to say that its second cousin is a station wagon. Some people think it's full on a station wagon, although technically um, it's considered in the crossover SUV kind of segment. Um, now, this does give you the typical SUV kind of feel. You do have a uh, 8.7 inches of ground clearance, but the biggest difference in overall dimensions of this is that the Outback is nine inches longer, while the Forester is four inches taller. So that's really where you're getting that nice wagon look. Now, this is gonna give you quite a bit of chrome here since it's the Touring, as I mentioned, uh, but overall a nice, elegant, rounded feel here on the front of the Outback. As you go along the sides, you know you have the chrome trim, which you do have on the Forester, but overall, a little bit more of a luxury kind of look to it. I like to describe that the Subaru Outback is a little bit more focused on luxury in the higher trim levels, and the Subaru Forester is focused a little bit more on being a little bit sporty. So if you take a look here on the front grille, now this is only gonna be on the turbo options that you have this aggressive grille, but it kind of augments that point that the Forester is a little bit more sporty than the Outback. So we have these nice, uh, on the front bumper on the turbo models, we have these nice air intakes here, which really give it a much more aggressive kind of look. Now, a couple other things here, now that these are the, both the, the highest trim levels you have, these also have the second engine option that is available for each of these models. So if you were looking at a base model, both of these would have the 2.5i naturally aspirated boxer engine with 175 horsepower. But if you go to the higher trim levels and choose to get the larger engine, with the Outback, you're gonna have a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter engine which is gonna produce 256 horsepower. And then with the Forester, you're actually gonna get a 2.0 liter turbocharged option, which is a very similar engine to what you're actually seeing in the WRX. So much more uh, kind of aggressive there. It's also going to give you a feature called SI drive, which will give you different driving modes that will control shift rate and also throttle response to give you a little bit more of that aggressive feel. Um, however, both of these cars will come with paddle shifters to give you that extra element of control. Now, if we're looking at more at the base levels of these cars and as they go up in trim levels, typical price difference, we're gonna see the Outback costing roughly $1,500 to $2,000 more than the Forester is gonna cost. And that's because you're gonna get a little bit more high-end features earlier on. So for example, if we're looking at the middle trim level, which, which is be the 2.5i premium for both of these, the Outback is gonna give you a much larger screen. You're going to get the, um, with the updates that they have for 2018 now especially, we're gonna get the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, so definitely some refinements there, whereas with the Forester, we're still with the older unit there. Um, really almost no changes whatsoever from 2017 to 2018 with the Forester. However, with the Outback, they have made quite a bit of changes, uh, both with the transmission and engine to give it a little bit more smooth, smoother driving experience. And the technology has been upgraded now with the third generation of the Starlink infotainment system, which, as I mentioned, gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So um, but we're also going to see things such as dual climate control, for example. Even if we were looking at a 17 Outback, we'd still be getting those features in the mid-level Outback, whereas you'd have to go all the way up to the Touring to get features like that. Now, both of these are the highest trim levels that we have. In the Outback, we're gonna see things such as wood grain trim throughout, which is really a nice luxurious feature, which we're not gonna see here in the Forester. This is definitely focused more on the sporty element. Now, we do have a brown leather interior option, however, uh, on the Forester now that started last year. And that's sort of beginning to kind of narrow the gap in terms of one focusing on luxury more than the other. However, if I had to pick and choose and kind of nitpick some of the differences here, I would still say um, absolutely 100% that the Outback is gonna be a more luxurious vehicle. 
Now, if you're someone who is a shorter driver, um, one of the biggest differences between this is the driving experience. I personally like driving the turbocharged model myself. I think it gives it a little bit stronger pull, despite the fact that the horsepower is actually a little bit larger um, on the naturally aspirated six cylinder here on the Outback, um, but is gonna be the seating position. So since the Forester is about four inches taller, you have the ability to adjust the height quite a bit more on this car of the seat itself, which really gives you that excellent uh, front visibility there. Um, I also think that the visibility in general in the Forester tends to be a little bit better than it is in the Outback. So for shorter drivers, most likely gonna prefer the Forester. It's gonna give you a little bit more of that traditional SUV-like feel, more of that truck kind of feel where you're sitting up a little bit higher. Now, despite the fact that the ground clearance is the same on both of these, the Outback is going to drive 100% like a car. You're gonna feel like you're in a car and not really realize how high off, off the ground you actually are. Now, this used to be more the case than it is now uh, between these two cars. It used to be that the Outback was much more cush, quiet, a lot less wind noise, things of that nature. And I do still think that the uh, Outback has a little bit less wind noise, although I wouldn't describe the, the you know, bumpiness or harshness of the ride as being that much nicer on the Outback. Probably a little bit. If I had to make up a number off the top of my head, I'd say it's 10% more cush uh, you know, over the bumps and things. Uh, but they've done a lot to modify the suspension on the Forester to make it a little bit more like it is on the Outback. Now, we do have noise insulating front windshields on both of these cars. However, we do on the Outback have a front driver window and front passenger window that is noise insulated as well. So it is gonna be a little bit quieter, a little bit less wind noise on the Outback than the Forester. Now, let's take a look on the inside of the car to see some of the differences between these two vehicles. So being the XT Touring trim level of the Forester, it's still a very, very nice place to be. As I mentioned, the Forester is not quite as luxurious as the Outback is. So for example, in the Outback, we would see the wood grain trim here. We're just gonna see a black plastic here, kind of giving it a little bit more of that sporty look. This is also gonna be the same infotainment system we've used since 2015. So in the Outback, we have the newer generation that we're seeing in the Crosstrek and Impreza, which does come standard with that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, this does come still with na uh, navigation. You'll get that with Sirius XM traffic. The traffic will be there for uh, three years, I believe. And you'll also get the Sirius XM radio on this, which you do get on all of the trim levels of the Forester, excluding the base model. Uh, but the nice thing about this is that it has been around for a couple years, so it's really been fine-tuned. We're not really experiencing any glitches or anything like that um, that you might with some of the newer models. So uh, the other thing that I mentioned, definitely much sportier. So here is where we're going to have the SI drive. Um, so this is going to give us the different driving modes where we can change the throttle response and shift rate. And the steering wheel is just a little bit more plain and simple, I would say, compared to that of the Outback. One of my favorite things that's sort of kind of pinpoints that note of the sportiness is we do have the boost gauge up here. This is a turbocharged model, so the nice boost gauge up there really reminds you that you're in a more sporty kind of driver enthusiast car compared to that of the Outback. Now, this is a very off-road capable vehicle, you know, with light off-roading just like the Outback is. So we do have X mode for your off-roading train or getting unstuck from deep snow. That's going to give you the throttle control management properties there and also helps send power to the wheels with less traction. We have our nice little traction monitor up there, which is quite nice. On the Outback, I don't believe it actually shows the wheels moving, which I like on this car. Now, despite the overall cargo capacity being within one cubic feet of one another for, between the Forester and the Outback, you do have a little bit of a taller opening here in the Forester. Now, you can fold down the seats with the touch of a button. You can also do this in the Outback but it makes putting larger objects such as a dresser or things of that nature a little bit easier to store in the Forester than it is in the Outback. Now the extra length of the Outback, however, does allow for most people to comfortably camp in the back of their car if they want to. And since both of these do come with roof rails on top, you can always throw you know, a cargo basket or a roof rack or something like that to throw all your goodies there, while you can simply camp in the back of the car with the Outback, which is a little bit of a tight squeeze for the Forester, I'd have to say. Now, this being the inside of the touring trim level of the Outback, this is going to be the nicest interior that we see available on the Outback. Now, unlike with the Forester, the touring Foresters, you have the option of either a black interior or a, like a brown leather interior like this one. With the Outback, though, you just get the brown leather, whether it's a, whether it's a 2.5 or the 3.6 like this one is. Now, as I mentioned in, earlier, the, this infotainment system is new for 2018 with the Outback. We've seen similar ones in both the Impreza and the Crosstrek. 
But this is going to be a newer infotainment system. Last year, the Outback had the same infotainment system that we see this year still in the Forester. But the nice thing that you get with this, it's a little bit larger screen. This is an 8-inch touchscreen display versus a 7-inch. And we're also going to have nice apps such as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that easily allow you to bring up your phone's screen here um, so that you can easily send with voice activation, text messages, make phone calls, and all the, you know, Spotify, things like that, you can pull up on the screen as opposed to in the Forester where you'd just be playing it via Bluetooth audio. Now we do have built-in navigation with this as well. There's no longer an SD card slot here, so it's all just kind of stored in here. And the other nice thing is that we do have Wi-Fi capabilities with this vehicle, which make doing over-the-air software updates easier than ever. Now, both cars, being the highest trim levels, do have the dual automatic climate control. They've made some changes here to this display, despite the infotainment system element of it down here, where the climate control is for this 2018 Outback. So now we actually have the digital display within the knob here. In terms of the buttons and everything, pretty much the same from last year versus this year. Um, we do have this black piano key kind of layout here that's a little bit different, as well as this nice satin chrome finish throughout. So we do see this black piano key and satin chrome kind of throughout, kind of ties the interior together quite nicely. And overall, as you can tell, just a little bit nicer interior. Now, we don't have things such as SI, you know, the boost gauge up there and SI drive for different driving modes. This is really just focused on being a little bit more of a comfortable place to be as opposed to a driving enthusiast's kind of car. Now, both of these do get the nice leather wrapped steering wheel. We do have the heated steering wheel on both of these being the touring model. But one of the other biggest things that I mentioned was the ride height, and so, not ride height, but I would say like the seating position height in the Outback versus the Forester. In this car, I feel much lower to the ground, despite the fact that both have 8.7 inches of ground clearance, so I'm, I'm pretty similar in terms of the height that I actually am off the ground. Visibility is still good. We do still have these nice windows over here that make it pretty easy to see around the A-pillar, but I would say without a doubt that the Forester has the best visibility, especially out of the back third panel over there. The window on the Forester over there is absolutely massive. And despite this vehicle also having the moonroof, the moonroof in the Forester is panoramic, much, much larger. And if you love moonroofs, you're definitely gonna like the one in the Forester a little bit more. Now you can definitely tell the difference in length between the Outback and the Forester, especially when looking at it from this view. Now, as I mentioned, the entry point on this is not quite as tall as it is on the Forester, but placing long objects in the Outback is very, very easy. And as I mentioned, you can even camp back here quite comfortably. So both of these do have the button where you can simply fold down the seats quite easily, and you can store, you can see just how long this is. It's nine inches longer than the Forester is. Um, so putting tons and tons of stuff in here is very, very easy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys have found this video to be helpful. If you guys are considering either the Forest or the Outback, make sure to check out our inventory at GrooveSubaru.com and give us a call to schedule your test drive today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button for more videos like this. See you guys next time on Groove Subaru Today. Take care.